Aid recipients in the Philippines reciprocate such as assistance by donating bamboo coin banks. Mexico City volunteers initiate work relief program to help pandemic-affected residents. Welcome to the Headlines. I'm Sirisu. Thank you for joining us. During the epidemic prevention period, city volunteers in the Philippines hosted an aid distribution. Unexpectedly, the residents not only came to receive the supplies, they also brought field coin banks to donate to Siji. Ako sa kaway mga biktima sa bagyong Yolanda, karon kay na biktima mga sa Yolanda, kita bang ako sa Suci, nakapuyo ako dito sa Suci Foundation. Karon kay nakapuyo naman ako dito sa Suci Foundation. Ako na sa din mo tabang sa mga tao nga nabiktima sa bagyo nga ulysses dito sa Sulusun. Sa pinaki sa sinsiyo nga ako i-hook sa kala. Tikunti po na ako para makatabang ako nila sa biktima sa bagyo. As typhoon victims before, the villagers can understand the hardship of having nothing. This made to this a distribution in Omic City become a gathering of love. Before the aid distribution, we raised love and funds for the residents. I'm so pleased that through gathering these donations, the villagers can help us hit hard by Typhoon Ghani and Typhoon Vanco. Coin-filled PET bottles are the evidence of love. In just three days, more than 20,000 pesos were raised, which is equivalent to more than 450 U.S. dollars. Not only receiving supplies, the residents also demonstrated that poverty is never an excuse of making donation. We're very glad to see so many people come here and that city came here to help the residents again, just like us willing to come here to provide the residents with the needed supplies. During the, the, the operations, the program, everyone is very um, cooperative. Um, they really contributed um, good with the distribution of the relief goods and everyone participated with a sense of respect and also very helpful to one another. Everyone pleasant is the best spokesperson for charity. They don't care how much they give, but just turn their love into a long-lasting contribution. Masaya na ako. Nakakuha, alis kami dito. Noong doon, na ngayon. Hindi ko man nakalain na ganito pala ngayon. Kaya nakahiga lang kami ng asawa. Tapos, Malaking tulong, napakalaking tulong po ang ginawa ninyong uh, hindi lang sa paaralan, maging sa mga magulang, sa mga sa lahat po ng residente ng Barangay Basud, binigyan nyo ng hanap buhay, hanap buhay na kung saan. Ay ako'y natutuwa at nasisiyahan sa pagdadamay-damay, tulong-tulong. Ang mabuting samahan. Everyone Continuing her island-wide tour, Dama Master Zheng Yan has held a talk with Central District City volunteers. During the talk, Taichung City Hospital doctor shared how the hospital conducts COVID-19 inspection. Meanwhile, volunteer Chou Jingmei's son has been in and out of prison many times due to wayward behavior. He has not changed for the better. The master gave him her best wishes. Despite suffering from mobility issues due to polio, volunteer Chou Jingmei dedicates herself to Tsuji's work. However, her son has been in and out of the prison several times. 
I thought of many ways, but they did not work. I could not control myself. He has attended volunteer training. When he made mistakes, he had conflicting thoughts. Part of me was committing crimes, while the other half of me was good. I could not bear it. As the master held a conference with Central District City Volunteers, Taichung City Hospital Department of Emergency Medicine Director Li Guanyi talked about COVID-19 inspection measures. Regarding COVID-19 inspections, WHO has given a definition, you must do it in an open area or space with negative pressure. Taichung City Hospital has used the most economical way to protect the medical staff and patients, speeding up the inspection. This design has been covered by international periodicals. The master encourages everyone to uphold piety and sincerity to cultivate blessings and benefit the public. In Taoyuan, among the newly certified city volunteers is a couple. They have a successful business, but they feel empty spiritually. As the wife read the Lotus Sutra, learning that benefiting the public is the most important thing in life, she decided to join Ziji. Zhang Chenzhe and his wife Ding Huimei have held study club at home to discuss Buddhist Dharma. The club participants have witnessed the changes in daily life. In the past, when I talked with my mother, she would get angry. However, after I joined the study club, she has not gotten mad at me. In fact, I need to cultivate my temper. In the past, I often argue with my daughter. After coming to the study club for nearly two months, we seldom argue now. Jan and his wife have been doing direct marketing for many years. With a successful business, they have a lot of friends. After joining Ziji while they were undergoing volunteer training, they invited friends to join activities. They have been certified as volunteers this year. The Buddhist Sutra taught about how people can become slaves to their family life. I thought about whether I am such a person. So, I hope to get my freedom. I discovered that after I went amongst the public, I found answers and my freedom. After finding the right life direction, the couple feels down to earth. They vowed to recruit a million donating members. Besides calming my mind and the minds of my family, I hope I can calm the minds of people I know. We can do good deeds together. Doing what benefits the public, the couple is leading a more meaningful life now. When Liu Bangzhou was young, his family was broken due to his drug addiction. However, thanks to the support and encouragement of city volunteers, he regained his life. Liu Bangzhou's life was once controlled by drugs. When I get a craving, it feels like tens of thousands of ants are biting over my body, inside my bones and in the bone marrow. It was bad. In the past, when he was addicted to drugs, he would hit his wife and children. Thinking about it now, I don't think I was a human being at all. But Liu Bangzhou bravely faced his mistakes. I didn't treat my mother well before, so now I regard the Siji sister like my mother. When he was in prison, he wrote to that Siji sister almost every week. Although they were separated by the prison war, the power of companionship could be felt there. After he was released from prison, Liu Bangzhou changed. We use the utmost patience and love to accompany him. Sometimes, when he is emotionally unstable, we try to use the Dharma to encourage him. His children slowly saw that their father was changing little by little. I feel that they are getting closer. The children witnessed the transformation of the father. I will walk the path of Bodhisattva to give back to my children. Reassure them that I will carry out my responsibility as a father. Liu Bangzhou shares his story, hoping that once those person will hear it and know that it's never too late to change.
the pandemic, masks are short of supply. Therefore, city volunteers in Mexico initiated a work for relief program asking residents to make fabric masks. Love is never limited due to the pandemic. Suchi volunteers in Mexico initiated the Work for Relief program, engaging the citizens to make their own fabric masks. Bought fabrics are cut and put into packages as it is distributed to different households. Concerning the pandemic, the parts in the package are then assembled at home through a Work for Relief program. <laughs> Due to sickness, my finger movement is limited and I can't move it freely. Now I help with making masks. This makes my hand gain strength. Every needle that goes through the handmade fabric mask represents care for others. During the pandemic, many lost jobs as they joined the Work for Relief program. After receiving the cash for relief, many shed tears. I am really thankful we really needed help. And it's not just us, more people out there need help. Thank God because of him we may work for relief. And I'm also grateful to Master Zheng Yan. Thank you. Gracias, Maestra. Gracias. This is Master Zheng Yan's blessing letter, and it's for you. Thank you. This is also a kind gift from the master. I'm really thankful to everyone's help and love, allowing me to give and contribute. I hope that in society there will be more organizations like yours, organizations that care about the disabled and disadvantaged groups, allowing them to receive care. Thank you. Fifty-four volunteers made over 14,000 fabric masks, proving that love still exists during the pandemic. Here's the hoping that more people may receive care. Since April, the city Thailand chapter has been helping Thai residents and refugees with relief items. The first session helped about 60,000 families for three months. Starting in September, a second wave of relief items were given to the recipients. As the coronavirus continues to hit the world, Thailand's economy is very visibly hurt. Although the government has lifted the restrictions on home quarantine and businesses are able to resume their hours, there are still many residents who are out of work or experiencing cut wages. These people are on the verge of running out of food. Chizi has hosted a first session of daily necessities pack distribution, but since the pandemic is not over, many people are still out of work, and life is still hard for them. As a refugee, their life was already difficult to begin with in Thailand, and now so in the Kovana forest, it will become unbearable almost due to the pandemic. Some have had their water and electricity cut off, or even been forced to move. To continue helping the families affected by COVID, Thailand City volunteers are doing a second session of aid relief, which will continue for three months. During the pandemic, it has been difficult to find jobs. I've received Zaji's necessities pack three times. It really helped those of us who are Cambodian or Vietnamese refugees because we're lacking rice most of the time. The daily necessities are very useful for my family, especially the white rice. If we had brought it, it would cost two to three hundred Thai baht. Chizi gave us 10 kilograms of rice, which can last us a whole month, and it helps to reduce half our financial burden. Many of them are faced with no food and going hungry, so we immediately decide to help them for three more months. We want to provide more assistance to them. Besides the aid distribution to relieve their living burden, volunteers continue to visit the community to see who else needs further help. She lives in a dilapidated wooden home. I never imagined a girl could live in a place like that. Volunteers help this girl move to a better home and also give her some furniture for her place. Why are we so invested in you? Because we want to help change your life around, change our society for the better. Pawini is moved to reciprocate the love and care Tsuji has given her. 
She uses the time she has off from school to be a volunteer. I want to repay the volunteers' care for me. So no matter if it's a distribution or helping someone with, I want to be here. Today I'm helping distribute necessities, and it makes me happy to feel a part of this big family. Though this pandemic has affected many people, it seems that even more love for one another has sprouted out of this disaster, as that might be the only way to get through this difficult, uncertain time. The Jiayi City Police Association held a tea gathering. Volunteers invited a special guest, Li Changyu, a criminal forensic expert in the United States, to share the principle of cause and effect. To comfort the hard work of the police officers and the firefighters, the Jiayi City Police Association held a tea gathering so that the police officers can learn how to relieve themselves. Police officers are always facing uncertainties in many dangerous situations. When our colleagues handle it, they actually bear the spirit of contributing to society. Participating in this tea gathering allows us to put away the high-pressure working environment temporarily. In this spiritual gathering, in addition to police officers and firefighters, there was a special guest, Dr. Li Chang Yu who was staying overseas. His birthday was on November the 22nd. Everyone celebrated his birthday through the Internet. He also took this opportunity to share the principle of cause and effect. Living a good life, cherishing good affinities, and leading a simple and happy life every day, this is the best lifestyle. <laughs> Volunteer sign language and musical instrument performances allowed the police officers and firefighters to temporarily put aside work, recharge their spirits and set off again. The Buddha Supplies Expo is held once a year in Ningbo, Zhejiang Province. On the first day, more than 1,500 people went to the booth of Tsuji Jingzi Books and Cafe. When you walk through the door, with grey words on a white background, you will see good books, good tea, and thought-provoking words in every turn or corner. In the annual Buddhist supplies exhibition, the Jinsu booth was constantly crowded. Liu Li threw with her 85-year-old mother to participate, just because she didn't want to miss it. I was a little worried at the beginning because, after all, my mother is so old, but there were Tsuji sisters to care for her all the way. I really didn't take much care of her. Seizing this weird chance to tell everyone about Tsuji, volunteers from all places came to help. Xu Jiyuan took a 30-hour train ride from Shenyang. This is also our mission as Tsuji volunteers. We all have a responsibility and obligation to promote our Jinsu culture. He told me that our Jingzi humanitarian culture was really good and it's one of the best in China. So I think we must promote it. On the first day of the expo, the number of visitors exceeded 1,500. Volunteers expected that good deeds can be known by more people. The Jinsu culture has changed my life a lot. Through this exhibition, I hope that our Jinsu culture will be seen by many. It is difficult for Hunchun to recruit and retain medical staff. Although three hospitals in Hunchun currently operate, how to close the medical care gap has become a test for government officials. Our hospitals are relatively small in size. There is a shortage of critical care doctors. Sometimes you have to go to Kaohsiung when you are extremely ill. This journey will sometimes take a lot of time. For critically ill patients, the risk increases. We can only deal with general medical problems. But for life-threatening first aid, there's a lack of specialized physicians and higher-end medical equipment, so there's a certain degree of difficulty in saving such lives.
Hung Chuan currently has three hospitals, Hung Chuan Christian Hospital, Nanmen Hospital, and Hung Chuan Tourism Hospital. Most severely ill patients are often sent to Donggang by car, which takes 1.5 hours. It will take 2 to 2.5 hours to go to Kaohsiung. Currently, Hung Chuan Tourism Hospital and Hung Chuan Christian Hospital are expanding their buildings. Even if medical hardware is increased, medical resources have been insufficient for many years. It's difficult to gain the trust and confidence of local residents. It's mainly because we are rural, which causes me to believe that medical treatment here is not very good. So I'll go to Kaohsiung for this. Minor illnesses can be treated here, but if something is more serious, doctors will advise us to go to a major hospital for check medical equipment, which we lack. Taking obstetrics and gynecology as an example, there are 134 newborns in the four towns of Hung Chuan from January to June 2020, of which only 16 were born locally. The local birth rate is low, as hospitals in Donggang or Kaohsiung typically deliver these babies. If you have to frequently change doctors, patients won't like this, especially when it comes to obstetrics and genealogy. If you get different doctors all the time, and when you deliver the baby, and it is delivered by another doctor from another hospital, you may not like this. Of course, it is not easy to hire a doctor here. The first problem is transportation, the second are dormitories, and the third is the education of children. We need medical care in Hunchun and for people who have lived here for a long time. This is a big predicament. For those with mobility issues who live in rural areas, it is impossible for them to get medical care, so we come to see them once a week. The shortage of medical staff in Hong Chuan, coupled with the increasing demand for medical care by aging populations in rural areas has discouraged many medical staff. For those who live alone in rural areas, they don't know how to get care and sometimes have no family, so they may be diagnosed with dementia when they come, which may be quite late. First of all, this can be a heavier burden to the family and an even heavier burden on the community. Since 2013, the county government and the Ministry of Health and Welfare have applied for a medical center support program. Currently, 13 medical center doctors are stationed here, and the Ministry of Education has a plan to spread it. If a doctor or nurse is willing to come back to Hen Chuan to serve, our county government will give them a cash subsidy of 3,000 U.S. dollars a year. Supplementing equipment, cultivating local nursing teams, extending the medical center's doctor support plan, and promoting medical reputation are part of the effort to improve local medical services. Additionally, integrating three Hong Chuan hospitals together may further close the gap in medical resources which rural areas typically face. In Malaysia, quantity volunteers and spare care recipients love to help typhoon affected residents in the Philippines. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.